Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish. Today, I wanna to offer a simple benchmark for determining encounter deadliness. I've looked at many different ways to build combat encounters over the years, and this is by far my favorite one. This show is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. You too be can become a patron of Sly Flourish by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish and signing up. Uh, patrons of Sly Flourish help pay for all of the things that I need in order to do videos like this and keep my website up and pay for all of the infrastructure and all of the odds and ends and all the other little small costs that come with building up uh, all the websites and the videos and everything else that I do. For the patrons of Sly Flourish, thank you very much for your support. So I'm going to describe the benchmark right up front. And it's really a two-step process. Step number one is build your combat encounters from what makes sense for the story and the situation. Before you think about any of the math, before you go to a book and start referencing challenge ratings and character levels and all that sort of thing, look at the situation that's going on in your story and ask yourself, what makes sense? In a game I'm running right now, the daughters of Sora Kel, who rule the, uh, the monstrous nation of the Droam, have brought in an army to take over a very powerful location called Claw Rift in the middle of the Mornland in my Eberron campaign. They have armored trolls, armored ogres, armored ettins and cyclopses and giants. They have Medusa wizards. They have all this sort of thing. I didn't figure out challenge levels with all of that. I just kind of thought about what it would make sense if they were bringing in their biggest and best monsters to take over this place. What do they have on hand and who would they, who would they bring in? How many they bring in? I'm not even sure. Probably not hundreds, dozens certainly. And where they're laid out there, I don't know that either. So right up front, I just have a list of the kinds of monsters I think are going to make sense given the story and the situation. That's number one. Step two is where the math comes in. And in step two, we want to figure out in any given combat encounter, have we edged over into deadly? And there's a pretty simple way for us to compare the monster challenge ratings of the monsters in, in an encounter, in a combat encounter, with the character levels in, in a combat encounter. And it goes like this. An encounter may be deadly if the sum total of monster challenge ratings is greater than half the sum total of character levels, or one quarter of character levels if those characters are below fifth level, right? So when we are looking at a battle, we, and we say well, it's going to be some number of giants. So let's say I have five tenth level characters that are going to be, uh, they're going through Claw Rift, and they run into a bunch of armored trolls. Right. And I think like how many maybe it's trolls and ettins or trolls and cyclopses. So there's a couple cyclops commanders. Right. The big bulky commanders. And they're, they've got a bunch of trolls with them. So how many do I think is probably right? So off the top of my head, I'm probably going to do two cyclopses and we're going to say five trolls. Right. That seems like a pretty big shock force. So the question is, I'm going to I'm going to let's 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 we're going to write this down. Right. Uh, so I have five trolls, five times trolls, and I have two times cyclopses, right? And what I want to figure out is, is that encounter going to be deadly for five 10th level characters? And the way I figure that out is I sum up all the character levels, right? And that's 50. And I divide that in half, and that's 25. So I have a total challenge rating of 25. The, anything above 25 is, is likely deadly at this at this level well i i think i'm already in severe trouble because i think trolls are like cr5s trolls are already cr5s which means five trolls is just on the edge of deadly i add a couple of cyclopses to this cyclopses are cr6 so that's 12 plus 25 35 37 right so i know that my encounter with five trolls and two cyclopses is probably deadly that's going to be a really hard fight. And I might want to adjust it. Like maybe it's just like their first encounter of the day and it doesn't need to be a big nasty thing. So maybe I drop it to four trolls and one cyclops, right? And now I've got five. So that's 26, right? 26 is a lot closer to the, 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 the 25. So I know that's just on the edge of deadly, but at 10th level, they're probably going to be able to handle that. So I didn't have to look up any tables. I didn't have to do any charts. All I had to do was look at the challenge ratings of the monsters, right? And all I had to do to figure out what the budget is, what the, what the deadly budget is, if you will, uh, is by uh, summing up all of the character levels in the game and then all the character levels in the party and dividing it in half, right? Because they're above fifth level. If they were fourth level, I'd make it a quarter. So let's say we had five fourth level characters, right? That's 20. Uh, instead of doing 10, we would do five, right? A max CR of five. Uh, I think a ghoul, right? Yeah, so a ghoul is challenge rating one, which means uh, 
five ghouls is roughly just on the edge of deadly for five fourth level characters. If you added another ghoul, you'd be just over deadly, right? Fourth level, you're right at that high end too, where fourth levelers are just getting to the point where they're really powerful. Fifth level, you get spells like fireball, fighters get double attacks, all sorts of things go up as soon as they hit fifth level, which is why suddenly it goes from five to 10. But it's a pretty simple, it's a pretty simple equation. And so we're going to take a look at how it compares to the traditional methods of encounter of encounter balance. Uh, but first, I want to throw up all the qualifiers. These are all of the reasons why none of the systems for building encounters uh, actually work all that well. And there's a bunch of reasons why. So there's a bunch of things that have an effect on combat difficulty that have nothing to do with the level of the characters or the uh, challenge rating of the monsters. And this is true whether you're using the rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide or Xanathar's Guide or Kobold Fight Club or the D&D Beyond Encounter Builder or even the couple of different methods that I've offered up for doing encounter balance. And it has to do with, so, so the first one is a little bit of a complicated one called the quadratic power increase of more characters. The more characters you have, the greater the synergy of those characters. It goes up more than just adding the extra character. So if you think about, the minute you go from four characters to five characters, those five characters, it's, you did more than just add a character. Those five characters as a total got even, are even more powerful than just adding that fifth member. So that's what we mean by like the quadratic power increase. It's not a linear power increase when you add a fifth character. They all get better when there's a fifth character there. Uh, what magic items and uh, the characters have has a big effect. Uh, whether or not you allow the optional rules of feats and multiclassing. If the minute you throw in feats and multiclassing, characters can expand in a lot of different ways and they'll be significantly more powerful than their baseline set. So magic items, feats, and multiclassing. If you have characters that have all three of those, they're definitely going to be more powerful than characters that don't have feats, aren't multiclassing, and may not have magic items. It's important to remember that all of the encounter building math that exists inside the Dungeon Master's Guide and Xanathar's Guide is based on the assumption that characters don't have magic items, right? And many of our characters do have magic items, and that sways the math, which is perfectly fine. It's just something you want to keep in mind when you're worried about whether an encounter is necessarily going to be deadly. So other things that have an effect, how well rested are they, right? Did they, is this the first battle of the day, and are they going to dump everything in it? Do they know that they're going to dump everything in? Are they going to blow all of their spells and all of their limited abilities in one fight? If they are, they're going to be way more powerful than if they have to, if the first fight in a long dungeon and they know they have to be conservative about what, what abilities they use. Class synergy. Do you have a really good mix of classes that benefit very well from each other or not? Uh, the player skills. How good are your players? Are they really, do they work really well together? Do they know all of their tactics? Do they have all the special moves that they can do between them? Uh, do they are do they just really familiar with how to deal with various monsters? Uh, variance and so so uh, action economy. Are there significantly more monsters than there are players, or vice versa? No matter how powerful a single monster is, if it's facing off against a whole group, it's going to be lagging behind that group a lot. And that's even true for legendary monsters. So usually you'll see legendary monsters and, and powerful monsters that are way higher in challenge rating that challenge a group. Monster challenge variants. Some monsters just hit above their weight class. The Banshee is one of my favorites, right? The Banshee is a very tough challenge four monster uh, up there with Ettens and, and its power ranking. But because Banshees can drop you to zero hit points, they actually theoretically do more damage the higher level the characters are. And when you have characters who have uh, a glowing weak spot for the Banshee's whale, they're going to lose all of their hit points at once, which means challenge rating four Banshees at higher levels are really, really tough. And there's a lot of areas, shadows, you know, uh, wolves. Uh, there's lots of different monster stat blocks that have particular features of them that make them really tough. The wolf's ability to knock you prone and get pack tactics with other wolves. So wolves are challenge one quarter, but between pack tactics and being able to knock people prone, they get advantage all the time. So they hit hard and they do seven damage a hit, which isn't a lot, but a challenge four, one fourth? That's a lot of damage. Wolves are really dangerous. They hit over their weight class. So there's definitely monsters that are either weak for their challenge rating or strong for their challenge rating. What all of this comes down to is eventually you're going to know way more about the capabilities of your characters and your players than any equation is going to be able to help you figure out. So whatever equation, whatever system you have for trying to determine and counterbalance, none of it's going to work as well as you understanding the capabilities of your characters, including the benchmark I'm talking talking about today. It's a rough gauge at best. And what you might figure out is, yeah, well, my characters are tougher than that. Or my characters actually have a pretty hard time with this. And in that case, you just lower it, right? Just 
you can still use the benchmark and just lower it a little bit or raise it a little bit. Go a little bit over, go a little bit under, and you can, you can tweak it as you go. The main thing is that no system is foolproof. All of these systems are flawed and they're not gonna come out with perfectly balanced encounters. There's no such thing as a perfectly balanced encounter. There's a lot of variance in our game. There's a lot of different player skills and character abilities and everything like that. And you're mixing it all together in one batch and you don't know how it's always gonna go. The best you can do is have a rough gauge. And that's what we're doing today. That's what we're talking about today is having a rough gauge of encounter difficulty, not anything precise. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about these systems that already exist, some of the things that you may already be familiar with. So the Dungeon Master's Guide has a whole system that describes how to uh, create combat encounters. And it's really a, has a, 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 it's a two, covers it at two angles. Your first angle is a thing known as an experience point budget. You figure out, uh, you, you add up all of the levels of the characters and you figure out any given, for any given character what the experience budget is for an easy, medium, or hard, or deadly fight. And you build that up for all of your characters together. And then you've got this big pool of experience points. And then you look at monsters and you determine how many monsters you can buy, sort of, for the experience point budget that you have. Except there's a multiplier component. So when you have monst when you have a number of monsters, you compare the number of monsters to the number of characters, and that either that m potentially multiplies up the total experience points that a monster takes. I'm not going to try to explain this system because it's a it's a mess, right? It's really hard to do, and it doesn't work that well anyway. When you're trying to constantly balance these two variables together and figure out, like, if I add one more monster in there, it throws off the math, and now I've got to use a multiplier. Uh, I've actually talked to other people. Uh, Dan Dillon, who now works for Wizards of the Coast, he had a technique which is pretty good, which is he just focuses on the experience points. He ignores the multiplier. What that means is his battles are, tend to be harder than what the Dungeon Master's Guide would, would put in there, but it's certainly easier for him to do it, and it means that his battles are definitely going to be challenging, particularly at higher levels. So that's not too terrible. But you you got to remember experience points and you got to go look up the experience point value of any given monster. The whole thing of dealing with experience points is kind of a pain. So I am not a fan. And actually, this is a reason why I've spent so much time looking at encounter building in, in the fifth edition of D&D is because I didn't like the way the Dungeon Master's Guide did it. It's too complicated and it doesn't work that well anyway. In Xanathar's Guide to Everything, they offered a different approach, which is a, a bunch of tables that you could look at. And you could simply look at, and I have, uh, I have that in here uh, in D&D Beyond. Uh, you can look at the number of characters that you have and the character's level, and then you can see what challenge rating for a solo monster or what the ratio is of monster challenge rating to character level, and then how many monsters per character. So like one first level character is the equivalent of one one-fourth CR monster. And you can sort of go down this matrix and figure out uh, how many monsters you can you are, are the equivalent of a given character at a given level. It sounds more complicated than it is, and it's actually not a bad approach for doing it, but it, but it can be easier too. Uh, in the Lazy Dungeon Master's uh, workbook, the Lazy DM workbook, I offered a quick encounter building guide, which uh, basically compared how many monsters compared to how many characters given a challenge rating at a given level. And it offers it for first level characters. You get one monster per character if they're CR zero to a quarter. You get one monster for every two characters if they're CR one half. And you get one monster for every four characters if they're CR one. That's a first level. And then it goes up from second to fourth level and fifth to 20th level, basically comparing how many monsters to how many characters you get. Not a bad system. I used it for years. I, obviously it's not a bad system. I put it in my own book. But I did find an easier way. And after, after looking at, again, I've been studying this for a long time. And after looking at it, what I realized is like, you can sort of abstract uh, the, a lot of the intricacies of this and basically create a, a CR budget the same way you have an experience points budget. And we're gonna ignore things like the number of monsters. We're gonna ignore, there's a lot of things we're gonna ignore because we know it's not gonna work that well anyway, right? So we're gonna edge it a little bit towards hard, mostly because the most of the encounters that you build inside uh, any encounter building system tend to go on the easy side, even when you're looking at deadly. And that's another good point. We're only looking at deadly. We're not looking at easy, medium, or hard. We just want to have a line and say, am I going to kill the characters or not? All of the rest of it, whether it's an easy fight, a medium fight, or a hard fight, we don't A, we don't know, and B, we don't really care. What we care about is what's happening in the story, what matters, which is why I'm a big fan of like two bandits in the woods, right? Like just because your group is, is five tenth level uh, five tenth level characters doesn't mean that they can't run into two bandit guards, right? And it's really fun when they run into two bandit guards because they know they can just kill them immediately, right? They're no, they're no threat. 
but maybe they're going to warn people or maybe they have information that we should have or maybe we can disguise ourselves and get past them or you know there's a lot of different things that that a lot of interactions that a bunch of 10th level characters can have with two with two bandits so we don't worry about that not every battle needs to be perfectly balanced to the difficulty of the characters which means we should have lots of easy fights lots of easy, easy fights are fine we only really get concerned when a fight may be deadly like my two cyclopses and four and five trolls right i only care if i'm going to make this too hard so I, 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 that's why I have that benchmark. The benchmark tells me, am I edging into too hard? Everything else, I just let the story dictate how many it's going to be. Maybe it's 50 skeletons, right? Maybe the, 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 the five 10th level characters are going to face 50 skeletons. So my question is, is that deadly? And the answer is skeletons, I think, are CR 1-4 as well. Yeah, so a skeleton is CR 1 quarter, right? So they count as 0.25, which means if I have 50 of them, uh, what is that? A, a CR of about 12, 50 skeletons are not going to be that difficult for five 10th level characters. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Two fireballs will take out 50 skeletons, right? They'll blow them all away. So we don't have to worry about that. But any range of monsters, any number of monsters, we're not going to worry about any of that. What we're just worried about is, am I going to wipe the party out? And we figure it out with that one simple, with that one simple equation, which is an encounter may be deadly, if the sum total of monster challenge ratings is greater than half the sum total of character levels or a quarter of character levels if they're below fifth. That's the only thing you need to remember, right? Take the total character levels, uh, add them all together, divide them in half, and that is your deadly benchmark, right? Anything that's higher than that could potentially wipe them out. Maybe they'll be fine, maybe not, but that's up to you to figure out. Anything below that, you're probably okay, right? If they're below fifth level, you quarter it. So if you've got, again, five, let's say five three level three characters, that's 15. Uh, you want to do a quarter of 15. Half of 15 is, what, seven, three. So somewhere about three to four, CR three to CR four, right? That's about the total number of challenge ratings you would want to throw against five third level characters. So again, it's a rough gauge. It's not a perfect gauge, uh, but it's just enough. And it's something that you can pretty easily keep in your head. Once again, add all the character levels together and divide them in half if they're above fifth, if they're fifth level or above, or divide them into a quarter if they're fourth level or below. And that's your deadly benchmark on total monster challenge ratings, right? For adding all the monsters together that they're going to fight. So there's a lot of advantages of this system. Uh, one of the advantages that is, so one is it's, it's relatively simple. You can keep it in your head. You can recite it a few times in your head. Maybe write it down a three by five card. You don't need any tables. You don't need any charts. You don't need any calculators. You don't have to look anything up. Uh, two, it accounts for mixed level characters. So if you happen to be a DM where all of your characters aren't the same level, it still doesn't matter. You still add all the character levels together and divide them in half or a quarter. So it works with different characters of different levels. Uh, it also works for monsters of different challenge ratings. You can have a lot of low challenge rating monsters and a couple of high challenge rating monsters, and it can still work out. Maybe you've got a band of orcs and a couple of ogres, or a band of orcs and a couple of cyclopses. Very different challenge ratings. You just throw them all in the bucket and divide you know, and figure out the math, right? You don't. It, it can account for a wide range. So that means you can have anything from 50 skeletons up to three fire giants, right? And you're using the same system for both. And likewise for players, it doesn't matter if you have a couple of fifth level characters and a couple of eighth level characters, you can still add them all together and figure out what your total budget is. So there's a lot of flexibility in this system. And it, it's, one, it's one sentence, right? It's, it's one sentence long. And, that, and just to recite it again, the sentence is, an encounter may be deadly, if the sum total of monster challenge ratings is greater than half the sum total of character levels or a quarter of character levels if they're below fifth level. So pretty simple system. It's one that I've been using now for a while. It's a really easy system to use. Uh, I, 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 I hope you'll take a look at it. I hope you give it a shot. If you're happy with your other systems, if you're happy using Xanathar's Guide or you're happy with Cobalt Fight Club or you're happy with the D&D uh, &D Beyond and Counter Builder, all of those work well too. They're all fine. Uh, if you're like me, though, and you want to have a tool in the back of your head so you don't have to look anything up, so you can just look at a battle and kind of look at your characters and gauge it, or you want to put it in your prep notes, right, that while you're doing your prep and you're adding your monsters to the thing, you want to say, so my characters are all 11th level, nine, five, five 11th level characters, that's 55, uh, half of 55 is, what, 26? Is that about right? No, 27? Uh, so CR 27 is my, you know, my 27 total challenge ratings is roughly my deadly benchmark. Right, you can put that right in your prep notes, and uh, now you have the gauge, right? And you don't need to look anything else up, and you have it all in your head. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's it's uh, something I've been very passionate about, something I wanted to do a video on for some time. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching and thank you very much and have a great day and get out there and play some D&D.